everyone, and welcome to today's presentation as part of the Tech Accelerator event. My name is Jessica Yang, and I'm a Senior Product Manager on the Intune Android Management team. Today, we're going to tell you about Remote Help for Android, which is a new feature that we're bringing to the Intune suite that will help you and your organization better manage and support Android devices that are used by your frontline workers. Earlier in this event, my colleagues Kara and Dave told you about how Intune enables remote assistance of Windows devices in their session on remote help for Windows. But Intune provides unified endpoint management for all types of users in every scenario, including frontline workers, which we'll focus on in this session. Frontline workers can be defined as people who are performing customer-facing and task-oriented roles. They frequently utilize shared dedicated devices, such as Android devices, which are often critical to day-to-day -day operations. Technical issues with these devices can cause significant downtime and productivity loss. Frontline workers also often operate in challenging environments where they may not have access to traditional IT support resources. With remote help for Android, you can help your frontline workers get the technical support that they need quickly and efficiently. This way, you save time and money by reducing the need for on-site support, reducing downtime, and increasing productivity. Remote Help is a cloud-based solution that enables your help desk team to resolve issues quickly and securely on Android devices, no matter where they are located. It supports Intune role-based access control, which means that administrators can configure who can help whom and with what level of permissions. On Android, you can choose from three different levels of access, view only, full control, or unattended control. This way, you can make sure that the right people have the right level of access to resolve issues on the devices that they're supporting. Remote help also includes device compliance warnings. So if a particular device is out of compliance, the person trying to assist the device will be alerted. And finally, remote help provides session reporting, which gives you insight into who helped whom, when, and on which device which can be really helpful for auditing purposes. Remote help for Android requires that the device is enrolled in Intune as Android Enterprise Dedicated, also known as corporate-owned single use. Remote help is supported on select Samsung and Zebra devices. To use attended screen share and attended full control, the device has to be running Android OS 8 or higher. For unattended full control, the device needs to be either a Samsung device running OS 8 or higher, or a Zebra device, also an OS 8 or higher, that also runs MX 9.3 and above. If you've already tried our remote help solution on Windows, which was launched last year, there are a couple of differences when we look at the solution on Android. Because remote help on Android supports dedicated devices, there is no user affinity. So you're supporting devices instead of specific users. Remote help on Windows also supports unenrolled devices, but for Android, devices need to be MDM enrolled with Intune to establish ownership with your tenant. Finally, help sessions on Android are launched directly from the Intune console, and you assist devices directly through the browser. Now, let's do a deeper dive into the process of actually setting up and using remote help for Android. There are five high-level steps that you would go through in order to set up remote help. The first step is to obtain the appropriate licenses to use remote help in your tenant. You can try remote help free for 90 days with up to 250 trial users. And remember, Android Enterprise dedicated devices do not have user affinity. In the Microsoft Intune Admin Center, under Intune Add-ons, you can view the licensing options for remote help and the other new advanced endpoint management solutions offered in the Microsoft Intune suite. Next, you want to make sure that the correct role-based access permissions are granted to the individuals you want helping these devices. In the admin center under role-based access control, you'll see three new permissions for view screen, taking full control, and unattended control. These allow you to specify the exact permissions that each administrator has to help different types of devices. When a helper goes to start a new remote help session for Android, these permissions are applied and the admin console UI only displays the session types that are appropriate for that user's level of permissions. Now that the licensing and administrator permissions have been set up, the next step is to deploy the remote help app to devices that you want to be able to assist. 
Remote help will be available in the managed Google Play Store as an app that you can deploy to devices and manage the same way that you would any other app in Intune. So you would add the remote help app to your Intune tenant and then deploy it as a required app to the group of devices that you want to be able to assist. Once that's done, the app will automatically be deployed to all relevant devices in that group. Once the remote help app is deployed on the device, there are a couple of additional permissions that you'll need to set up. In the admin console, you can use app configuration policy to auto grant the camera and microphone permissions to the remote help app. Samsung devices will also need an additional consent for the Knox agent to run, and you'll need to grant the display overlay permission, which allows it to display UI elements over other parts of the screen. A second permission called restricted screen reading allows the remote help app to share the contents of the screen with the Intune service. On Zebra devices, you can also use OEM config profiles to grant the restricted screen reading permission and to bind to Zebra services. So that's a high level overview of the steps that you need to take to set up remote help and start to use it. But let's get now into a demo of what it actually looks like on the device and in the console. During this demo, we're going to be following a fictional IT pro persona named Susan. Susan works for Contoso Art Supply, a chain of art supply stores, and she's responsible for overseeing the smooth operation of ruggedized devices that are used by retail associates. So here's Susan's admin console, and she's going to go over to her devices tab. And we can see that she has two devices here. One is compliant and the other is not compliant. Susan's gonna try and start a remote help session with the non-compliant device. Notice that the UI warns her that this device isn't compliant so maybe she wants to think twice about connecting to it and entering passcodes and so on. Next, Susan is going to go back to the list of devices, and this time we're going to look at the device that is compliant. So she's going to click on Start New Remote Assistance Session, and you'll see that she gets these three options to choose from, screen sharing, full control, and unattended control. Susan has just issued some new devices to the store, and she wants to go over the setup with Katie, the store manager, before these devices are distributed to store associates. So she's on the phone with Katie, and she's going to initiate a request for full control in the admin console. On the device, Katie sees a prompt that shows Susan's UPN and a request for full control with a reminder to close anything that you don't want the other person to see. Katie doesn't really want Susan to see the search that she's been doing about paintbrushes, so she's going to decline this first request so that she can close Edge on the device. In the admin console, Susan can see that Katie has declined the request, so Susan's just going to wait until Katie confirms on the phone that she's ready, and then she's going to go back and try to start that session again. On the device, the prompt shows up again, and this time Katie hits accept. And now in the admin console, we can see that we're connecting to the device. I'm actually going to quit out of the manage home screen kiosk for a moment here to properly go over the different controls in the interface. So in the top left here, it tells you which mode you're in screen sharing, full control, or unattended control. On the right, we have our soft buttons, back, home, and overview. And if you're not familiar with Android devices, the overview button typically just shows you a list of all the apps that have been running. So we can open something and then hit back to go back to the previous screen, and we can also use the home button to return home. You'll also notice that although the buttons on the device are actually in the reverse order of what's shown in the control UI, they perform as expected because we're mapping these to actual inputs on the device and not pixel positions. Next, we have the volume down and volume up buttons, which kind of do what you would expect, decrease or increase the volume on the device. Finally, we have the power button, which on most Android devices is going to be a button that's on the side of the device. 
When you do a short press, it typically turns the screen off. And if you press and hold, depending on the device model and manufacturer, you might see a slightly different behavior, such as a restart device action. But this will work just the same as if you push the physical button on the side of the device. Finally, on the right, we have a leave button, where clicking on this will simply leave the session and close the app in the console as well as on the device. But we are not going to leave this session quite yet. So let's actually go back to Katie and the Manage Home screen and look at a couple more ways that you can interact with this device. I'm just going to open up my warehouse management app over here. And you can see that we can tap on things, we can swipe on the screen, everything that you would expect to be able to do if the device was physically in front of you. And we can actually also perform keyboard input. So while she has Susan on the phone, Katie has a question about something else. And Susan wants to show Katie what an Ethernet cable looks like so that Katie can plug that back into the wall. She's going to open up Edge right on Katie's device and search for an image of a Cat6 cable. And let me just bring my keyboard into the view of the camera over here. And you can see that Susan is typing on the computer keyboard and that input gets mirrored on the Android device. So interacting with the device from the admin console really feels very natural and mirrors all the standard behaviors that you would expect to be able to perform on the device. Now let's quit this session and do something else and take a look at unattended sessions. One of the employees at the store has sent over an email complaining that a particular device isn't connecting to a Bluetooth label printer. Susan wants to be able to remotely access this device while it's in the charging dock during a scheduled maintenance window. This way, she can take control of the device while it continues to charge, and the next day, a store associate can come back and start to use it again. So she's going to go back to the admin console and click on Start New Remote Assistance Session, and this time she's going to initiate unattended control. You'll notice that the UI is a little bit different here, and it says that we are connecting to the device, but we don't need there to be a person on the other end to accept the request. Instead, the session will automatically begin after a certain timeout duration, and the reason for that is just to give the person on the other end a chance to back out, um, just in case this isn't really an unattended session, and they weren't expecting a request for control to come in. Now, the session has started, and what we're looking at is the locked device with a black screen, which is exactly what you would expect since it's sitting in a back room in the charging dock and there's nobody around. But there's nothing to worry about. We can simply use remote help to turn the screen on and unlock the device from our end by clicking on the home button. So now that we have the screen on, let's just take a look at what's going on with the Bluetooth. And it looks like somebody has accidentally turned that off. So we can fix that by turning it back on. And we should be good to go. Let's close this settings menu by clicking on the floating home button once again. And we'll click on the power button to turn the screen off. And now we can end the session. There are a couple of ways that we can do this. On the device itself, we can end the session by using this floating button that indicates the session is in progress. In some cases on the device, you can also end it from a notification that shows the sessions in progress, which I can't show to you right now just because I have the Manage Home Screen Kiosk configured to disable the notification shade. But again, it's not really a problem because we always have the admin console where we can just click on that leave button, leave the session. And you can see now on the device that the floating button is gone and the help session has ended.
I want to go over a couple more things that I didn't get to show in that demo just now. If a session is left untouched for too long, Remote Help displays an idle countdown timer on both ends, both in the admin console and on the device. This will automatically end the session after a while as a security measure in case the device or the helper device is left unattended. Just like Remote Help on Windows, Remote Help on Android also provides reporting. So you can view the following information for Android sessions. The provider ID or who is assisting the device, the device name, device serial number, AED device ID, control type, so attended control, unattended control, or view only, as well as the times that the session started and ended. In addition to these session reports that you can view in the admin console, we've also added audit logs for remote help sessions that were created in Intune. This way, administrators can reference past events for troubleshooting and analyzing log activities. Thank you so much for attending this session on remote help for Android. I'm really looking forward to answering your questions here in the Q&A, as well as at our Ask Microsoft Anything sessions later on during the event. For more, check out our blog posts on the Intune suite and updates to remote help, which are up on the screen right now. Thanks again.